Whoa's okay. In this Bondi vet compilation, watch out as we encounter some fearsome animals with some big attitudes. From the powerful... You're gonna wake him up, get ready to run. Yeah, I'd go, I'd go. To the unpredictable. <laughs> Our vets face down their toughest patients... Lord's dream is, is to bite Scott. ...to give them the care they need. Scott, have you seen who's coming in today? Your favourite. The clinic's most feared patient is booked in later today. It's always quite concerning when you see must be muzzled on yes, their patient card. Yes, bright red. Yes, gauntlets at the ready, but fingers in your pocket. Yeah, awesome. Every six months or so, the word bam bam will flash up on my screen. And yes, it's always a day that you know that the adrenaline is going to be flying high. Just a short distance away at her home in Richmond, Sheena is getting Bam Bam ready for his outing. What are we going to do with you, eh? You who doesn't like to get groomed. Hard to believe this sweet, shaggy angel <laughs> turns into a demon when confronted with a set of clippers. Not even Sheena can brush him. You feel really defensive because you know he's a wonderful dog and you know his gentle side, you know how loving he is. All they see is this gremlin that comes in the door. It's really embarrassing. Come on, Bob. Come on. Come on. Bam Bam's bitten his owners. The last time Sheena's partner brought in the dog, we had to send him to A&E. That's how serious this dog wants to injure anyone that is doing something that he doesn't like. Morning. Good morning. morning. How's trouble? He's Hi, wound, Bam Bam. Him, wound himself up quite badly. Oh, has he? Already. Yeah, he's shaking like a leaf. Can you okay. see him? OK. Oh, dear. Yes. You'd have thought by now he'd realised you're not going to kill him. He no. The moment of truth has finally arrived for Scott. His nemesis, Bam Bam, has entered the building for a haircut. Sometimes when I take him in, he is very long and hairy, and it's not because I'm negligent, but I can only have him anaesthetised a couple of times a year. People say to me, surely you can take him to the groomers and just give him a sedation. And I'm like, no, you don't understand, because even under sedation, he's still growling, right, and he's trying to fight for his life. So whatever anybody did to this dog, historically, they did a real number on him. <laughs> so far, Scott is the only vet who hasn't turned Sheena and Bam Bam away. Mum's a bit upset today. She doesn't like to bring you in, you know that. The reason why Scott's been so amazing is he's A, never thrown me out with Bam Bam, and what Scott never did is he never judged me. Bye, baby. Bye, hon. Bam Bam, come on then, buddy. Let's go. Good boy. Yeah, just yeah, shaking. Yeah. Look at him. Poor little thing. He doesn't realise that I have to do it. Because no. he's a dog he doesn't understand. <laughs> Please give me a dog back at the end of the day. Because he means so much to me. And I'll look after him well and we'll um, give you a call once he's working up. OK. Thanks a lot. OK. Bam Bam. Ah, no. But as soon as Scott and Bam Bam are alone... No. ..hostilities break out. No. If he came in growling, everyone would know where they stood. Don't be nasty, come on. But because he comes in very calmly and then launches within seconds, he is an exceptionally dangerous pet. Oh. No. Don't be horrible. No. Stop that. I think we're going to need some more drugs today. Yes. Right, so we'll do our usual technique. OK, I'll slide this through the door. Scott has to literally treat Bam Bam like a wild animal to sedate him. It's primitive, but effective. OK, you've got him? I've got him. It's all about fear. He's fearful of me, and I'm definitely fearful of him. OK. Let's see what happens. Come on. <gasps> Ooh, yowza. It's, a, <laughs> it's always a day that you need a stiff drink when Bam Bam comes <laughs> in. A bit dozy. Yeah, those drugs kicking in. Finally, Bam Bam appears to be docile enough to be handled. Just always be careful. You remember, this guy actually growls in his sleep. Even with the muzzle on, your adrenaline is, is pumping high. We should keep a very close eye on the depth of this anaesthetic for our safety as well as his. My heart's pounding. I'm shaking a little bit. 
I've still got to do my job as well as trying not to get eaten. So nerves on, on tender hooks. So do you want to do the fur and the feet? Yep. And I'll do the body bits. All on you. While Bam Bam is under, Sheena has also asked Scott to clean his teeth. Have you done the hairdressing before, Ryan? No, can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never claimed to be a groomer. A shearer, however. He's a very, very, very good vet because he puts animals first. He's empathetic to the owners, but what I see about Scott is that his real concern is for my dog, you know, and to make sure that he's OK, and that means everything to me. Dental's all finished down this end. Scott's now completed Bam Bam's dental work, but Emma has discovered something worrying. Scott, he's just got a bit of a situation on his tail here. Mm, whatever it is, it doesn't look very nice. To find something that looks that angry and that nasty is a massive cause for concern. The problem is the mass is so large that once removed, it will leave a wound that will be impossible to close. A mini amputation is the only answer. Hi there, Sheena. How are you doing? I'm OK. OK, so look, that tail lump. It came up very, very quickly. Scott's yeah. now seeking permission from Bam Bam's owner, worry, Sheena, to go ahead with surgery. So I always say it's best that we remove it straight away. What do you mean? Actually take the end of his tail off. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes being a vet is about offering up decisions which are difficult. And to say, I'm going to take a section of your dog's tail away, no dog owner is going to feel good about that. There's nothing good about that at all. Is it going to be in a lot of pain? I don't have any concerns regarding pain. OK. OK, all right, trust me, and I'll uh, give you a call as soon as you've woken up. OK. All right, then. See you later. Thank you. Bye. As soon as Bam Bam's grooming is finished, Scott takes him into theatre to remove the tip of his tail. OK, so you can grab the tip of that. Emma and Scott have been working together for seven years. A lot of people do say behind every good vet is a good vet nurse. Okay. We have such a relationship during a surgical procedure or during an emergency situation. I know what he wants before he wants it. I don't want to take off any more tail than that. I'll send it away and we'll just see what the will just say. A sample will now be sent to the lab to find out if the lump is malignant. You back in there while you're still being a good boy. Sheena's a great owner, but I suspect that she's going to be in bits when she comes to pick up Bam Bam, and I just can't reassure her. At the moment, I just simply don't know. It could come back as something absolutely fine. It could come back as really bad news, so we just need to wait and see. It's one and only time I get to pet you. It's quite nice. Let's get your boy back. A short time later, Sheena and her partner Neil arrive to pick up Bam Bam. Come on then. Good boy. That's it. Good lad. A sample from the lump on his tail has been sent to the lab for analysis, but it will take several days to find out the results. Here we go. Out to see mummy. Sheena is still very shaken. B. Why are you coughing? Is it because he wants to get to me? I knew she'd taken it badly. But then to see the reaction of her to actually collapse on the floor like that, I've never seen anything like it. How are you feeling about everything? It's scary. It's really heartbreaking. And I had to take a couple of tranquilizers that then made me really think it was a dream <laughs> after I heard about the tale. So we'll be sending it off to the pathologist. I know you're worried about it but it's something that we'll have to just hold fire on concern for three days and wait until that result comes back. OK. Taking a little piece of him off is traumatic. He doesn't understand it. Mm, take so care, much. all right, no worries. Pleasure. Fingers crossed. The news is going to be good for her. Trouble. See you, buddy. Sheena, how are you? Hi. For Sheena, she's been anxiously waiting for Bam Bam's lab results. Yeah, Grab a seat. It's been three days since Scott removed a nasty cyst, 
from his patient's tail. Oh, he kind of knows who you are. Already not so oh, keen, is he? No, no, he's not. <laughs> I've oh. not got a scalpel on me, I promise. Come on, Bobs. I've got some good news for you, OK? Yeah. And that the results have come back that the mass is benign. So, in other words, nothing nasty, nothing to worry about. I'm so relieved. Yeah. Thank you so much. No worries. And you know how much I love this dog. <laughs> I'm so happy. Are you happy to hear that? Sheena reacted brilliantly. You know, she's massively relieved and she can go on living with Bam Bam for a very long time and Bam Bam can go on tormenting me. I never thought that I was a very good dog stylist until you <laughs> now have matching haircuts. <laughs> I must have done That's something right. Funny. Well, yeah. next time I do them, you should come yeah. in. I'll do a two for yeah. one off. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that would be really, really nice. <laughs> Great to see you. You too, you too. Thank you so much. I really My appreciate pleasure. it. <laughs> wow. Right now, I'm heading to a place called Mahalo Holo, which is a very special wildlife rescue and rehabilitation centre. They'll take anything from lions that are hit by cars to leopards that are caught in traps. You name it, they'll treat it. And right now I'm off to actually microchip a rhino, which I think is going to be easier said than done. Well, 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 I got to meet a long, tall guy like you from Australia. No wonder you good cricketers and rugby players, eh? Tall so, and strong. So Look at me, I'm the animals, small. Huh? <laughs> You're right. well, welcome, man. Wildlife warrior Brian Jones set up Maholo Hollow as an animal refuge back in 1992. There are a lot of challenges for the animals in Africa. They're getting poached, they're getting poisoned, they're running out of habitat. Where do they go when things get tough? Thankfully, there's Maholo Hollow. Um, everybody ready? Here we go. Okay. You, you go. jump with us, yep. so if you guys come with us. All right, hi, let's go. Chris has been asked to join in a mission to microchip a wild rhino. So if he doesn't like what's going on, he's going to, he's going to charge? He, he might. He, he might do, yeah. I've had one smash five vehicles the other way. Uh, bad. Uh, if he did come, we'd have to run for our lives and get in the vehicle. And I've had them smash the vehicle a couple of times. They put their horn, fortunately, they put their horn underneath and lift the vehicle up. So it's only the, the back horn that punches a hole. Cody, Cody, we on our way now, Cody. Poaching for rhino is something you hear occasionally about in Australia, but in Africa at the moment it is the new story because last year 330 were killed. We're not talking small money for this rhino horn, we're talking about $50,000 a kilo, and in an adult full size rhino, there's about five kilos of horn in each rhino. That's a quarter of a million dollars. Chris and the team are searching for two rhino brothers. Stay right next to the right. Okay. It's the smaller of the two males who still needs a microchip. That's him there. The first problem is getting close enough to the rhino to sedate it with a dart. I'm now at the perfect distance to fire. But the reality hits me, if I get this shot wrong, she's gone. There'll be no second chance. All the while I've been thinking, I'll have some time for this shot. I'll be able to get myself prepared, focused, get the target right. All of a sudden, Hind says, go now, must go now. And it's on. Before I can enjoy the relief of landing that shot exactly where I wanted it to go, he's taken off. And it doesn't look like he's coming back. A bit stressed about us being around. Made a run for it. The worry is that the truck hasn't kicked in yet, so. He's going to drop at some stage, but it might be, might be miles away. Spotting some tracks and they're going through this one. You wouldn't think it'd be possible to lose something as big as a rhino, but that's exactly what's happened. But thankfully, what have we got? Heinz tracking skills. The guy's incredible. He's looking at the dirt. He just sees things that I can't even see and goes, not this way, it's gone that way. And all of a sudden, we're getting close to that rhino. We see the big one. There go. Here's the other one. Go ahead. Hein now alerts Brian to their location. Okay, also, so southeast of you. 
Yeah. Well, just keep an eye open for the other one, eh? The other one ran away towards the mountain, but just keep an eye open, ears and eyes open. He's stumbling around, so it certainly made him immobile. They stand and sleep like horses, and then at some stage they go down. Chris and Hein are now carefully approaching the sedated rhino. There is still a risk it could turn and charge. To be that close to a rhino, it's one of the most dangerous animals in the world. It's this weird mix of exhilaration and absolute terror, all at the same time. I see there's some blood. There's a hole here. Just extraordinary. Brian and his team have been given the all clear to bring in the equipment for the dangerous procedure. It really hits home for me when you're here and you see those animals and you look into their little eyes and they're caught up in the middle of this war and they don't really know why they're involved. What they use the horn for is, is honestly a, a bit of a mystery as far as scientists are concerned because it's claimed to have every benefit from being an aphrodisiac to helping arthritis to uh, people even claiming it cures cancer. It's, it sells for up to a million per horn. It's, it's ridiculous money. It costs them their life and they, they pay the ultimate price. They're getting ruthless. They're going with GPSs. They're going with international cell phones. I was talking to the rangers in the park when I was there now. And they said, Brian, they have a scout that goes out first. He finds a rhino. He hones him in with the GPS. They shoot it and move out. And in two days, the horn's in China. It's a, it's a one on war. Yeah, he's still nice and pink there. The drilling has started, so the tiny microchip can be placed in the horn. This male's actually very close with the other bigger male and he's just been lurking around the bushes over here, so his constant concern is the fact that he's just very close by. He's not liking what we're doing to his mate, and he could charge any minute. The hole's nice and clear, so that's ready for the chip now. This is a medical procedure with a huge purpose. The idea of getting that microchip into that horn means that it can be tracked anywhere in the world and know exactly where it's come from, and that's the big step in trying to really rule out this horrific crime. 4B7F7 alpha 2033. We've microchipped him, we've vaccinated him, we've, we've marked him, we've taken DNA samples, vitamin injections. Really, the whole works is done right here and right now. Now we've done everything, really, it's just up to this injection just to reverse this anesthetic and, and then he, he should hop up and continue on his life a bit, a bit safer than he was before. It will be only minutes before the rhino wakes up and the team needs to clear his departure path. You're going to wake him up, get ready to run. If you can climb a tree without thorns, good luck. OK, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Watch out, watch out. Honestly, when I gave that reversal, I thought, I've got a couple of minutes here, we can amble away. Uh-uh. He woke up straight away and meant business. The rhino is still groggy, so he's crashing over rocks and then barges through a tree and then turns around and looks at me. I'm thinking, no, mate, just keep on going the way you're going. But no, he runs straight at me. Yeah, I'd go. I'd go. So I do the courageous thing and run fast. I'm sure you're having a great laugh, but when that rhino is running at you, it's very, very scary. Trampled by a rhino. Interesting way to go. I've got some oxygen. Chris is good. No, no, he, he's a natural. But he's in the wrong place. He should be in South Africa. That was very special, so thank you. No, well, mission accomplished. Yeah. You're right, really? Kitty. I know, you were scared oh, and sore. A frightened cat has been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash with a suspected snake bite. Ooh. How are we going to hurt you? But examining Dougal is going to be very difficult. <laughs> Gives me a fright every time. This cat has apparently been found next to a black snake and according to the owners, he's got a swelling on his face. The problem is he is seriously angry and we cannot get near him. Far oh, out, you're crazy, kitty. Yeah. This is not funny because snake bites are actually really serious. But Dougal's owners are refusing to appear on camera. I think they're embarrassed by his behaviour. Well, he's in there. You're going to be fun, aren't you? 
So I think our only option is to give him an anaesthetic with gas. Lisa now has to get Dougal into the anaesthetic chamber. Should have a first aid kit. The question is, can the team do it without casualties? Dougal is nuts. He could really hurt someone. He is a shredding machine. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Let's have it. Ah! Right. Oh, takes three people to wrestle a five kilo cat. Isn't that just great? It's taken a few minutes, but Dougal is finally under my control, and now I can actually start looking for the bite site. The problem is we've already lost valuable time, and if Dougal has been bitten by a black snake, then that venom is already attacking his system. I think we've definitely got some soft swelling over here um, and two puncture wounds over there. With puncture wounds found, Lisa has the evidence she needs to start giving Dougal the anti-venom treatment. Give him five minutes for those meds to kick in. He can't even lift his head and he's growling already. Not a happy camper. Even though everyone's having a laugh, about Dougal's personality and how aggro he is. It actually is quite a serious situation. It's normally we give it over half an hour, but we'll just go a little bit slower in him. I just don't want him to have a reaction. The problem with black snake bites is that the animals can actually get worse before they get better. Sometimes they can have delayed signs, so it's really important that we keep a close eye on Dougal and only send him home when we're 100% sure he's recovered. This is a different cat because before he was lunging at the cage and now oh. he wants some kisses. Hey. Look at you! Sasha's most feared patient has survived a snake bite. Oh my goodness! What a different cat! And appears to have had a personality transformation. He was like a wild zoo animal that we couldn't get near without sedation. Now he practically came out of the cage to cuddle us and he is just a completely different cat. Hello, buddy. But there will be one more test of this prickly patient's Hello. personality. I still don't trust you though, buddy. I'm no, sorry, I don't trust you either. after your performance. We're gonna be taking out his IV catheter, which is not pleasant for even the nicest of cats. So it's gonna be a bit of a challenge with Dougal. We've got some sedation ready in case he decides to not play with us. Or he does decide to play with us. In his way, <laughs> not our way. <laughs> we are <pe> <laughs> Nearly done. One, two, three. <laughs> Come on, okay. Dougie. Shh, shh, shh. All right, hey, just hey, a band-aid. Hey. Worst is over, it's all over. I'm always happy to see my patients go home because it means that they're better, but I don't think Dougal's going to be on my Christmas card list. And I've given him strict instructions that he needs to be a good boy to his family. He really needs to keep the only friends that he's got. So, Dougal, you happy to be leaving us at Sash? Please don't come back. While Jen and Jewel go home for the countdown, Chris is on his way to the Australian Reptile Park for a consultation he's not too keen on. That is our big male, King Cobra. Mate, I can see his problem already too. Is that a retained spectacle there? Yeah, it's very yeah. obvious, isn't it? Nicknamed King of the Jungle, the five metre Cobra is one of the world's most dangerous snakes. Doesn't look too happy. The problem with the king of the jungle is the fact that when he shed his skin, he left a couple of scales over his eye. Because he can't see out of his right side, he freaks out and he's liable to strike, which makes him dangerous. The scales have to be removed, and that means trouble for head keeper Tim Faulkner. The amount of venom that gets pumped into you from a bite from that is so much that it outweighs toxicity in some cases. And you know, you do not want to get bitten. You know, I'm not catching him. He, he is beyond me. He needs the master. It's not me. 
The master is the owner of the Australian reptile park, John Weigel. He's crazy. I wouldn't say that he's, he's mad. He certainly doesn't take risks. It's all calculated and he, he knows what he's doing. The biggest problem is that there's so much snake here to work with in such a small area. You know the king's not mucking around when you see him actually have a little strike at John. Now, if that was me, I'd be backing off and just thinking this just isn't going to happen today. The position you put the snake in by going in there, it's going to bite. After several attempts, John finally pins down the formidable cobra. So I'm going to need some help with this snake, guys. Given how venomous these snakes are and how much venom they inject, it's we're also going to milk him, so if he was to bite someone, mainly us or other keepers, it's going to be a lot less dangerous. Ooh, look at that. Holy moly. See, that's fangs just injecting in. As far as procedures go, it's actually not that complicated. You're just getting some tweezers and lifting that scale off the eye. But you have all these conflicting emotions and energy inside you going, get out of there as soon as you can. So it's a matter of being gentle, precise, and quick. He's getting his first look at me, and he doesn't like it. Oh, look at that. That's got to be four layers. Yeah, it's quite a few. So now comes the fun part, getting rid of the snake. <laughs> OK, everybody hop out. OK, we ready with the door, guys? Yeah, yeah. OK, operation successful. What we wanted to do was to get the snake out without scaring it too much and without sustaining a world newsworthy bite. It worked out perfectly. I think we have a happier snake on our hands now. There's a threshold that you have to decide to cross. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I could cross it. Would, I mean, would you cross it? We decided that threshold was sanity. Yeah. And you'd gone actually beyond <laughs> that. Tim said he's crazy, but he's not mad. No, he's crazy and he's mad. Good boy, how's your leg? Scott's last patient of the day is Claude. Good boy, Claude. Can to go see Scott? A feisty three-year-old French bulldog. No biting, not gonna be evil dog. With a wounded leg that needs regular dressing changes. Hello. Hello. Oh, you've got Claude. Got Claude to come and see Scott. Oh, let me come say hello. How's he? All right? He's good. He's got his leg, but it's still healing. Claude isn't exactly one of Scott's biggest fans. Claude and Scott have always had a quite turbulent relationship. Good boy, Claude. I heard um, he's not a big fan of Scott. Hates him, <laughs> don't you, Claude? Evil dog Claude is what Scott calls oh, he you. He looks like that wouldn't melt, don't you? First time seeing Scott for a while, he's a little bit nervous around him. And, well, that's Scott, not Claude. <laughs> because of Claude's behaviour to him previously. Claude's dream is, is to bite Scott, I think. Hello. Hello, Marcus. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm, I'm great. Good. Um, You've got your best friend here today. Yeah, yeah. How are we, Claude? Hopefully he's had breakfast this morning, has he? Yeah, he's eaten. He's had lots of treats. All right, well, come on then, champ, into your favourite room. Come on, Claude. Come on then. Let's go. That's it. Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. It's all right. Yeah. All right. OK, all right. OK, Daddy's just there. Claude very much is a Dr Jekyll, Mr Hyde kind of dog. He is fine one minute and sweetness and light, and the next minute... Whoa! OK. All right, and that's touching the back, not even the, the front leg. Come on. No, it's all right. Stop it. Good boy. Come on, buddy. All right. OK. All right, we were getting on so well. <laughs> yes, very frightening. Claude recently injured his leg. But Marcus has been struggling with the regular bandage changing and wants some tips from Scott. It might be quite unorthodox, but Marcus is literally the only person that Claude will allow to do anything like a dressing change whilst he's awake. Whoa, OK. Oof. It's just a case of having a little tutorial session how to place a dressing on a dog. Good boy, good boy. I would like to help you, but uh, it's It'll difficult, be, isn't it? Uh, bandaging you up if <laughs> if you do stop okay, it. So let me have the dressing there, mate. Can I have no, this? If I will... yeah. All right. 
OK. It's OK. Good boy. Good boy. I've never had a, a veterinary lesson or any medical lesson before, so it was, a, it was a new experience. It's hard to do this job with one hand, isn't it? Then you'd like me to have none. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not safe, yeah. Just over the top of that, that's it, and squish it on. Good boy, good boy, that's good it. boy. Perfect. Okay. Great work. So that thing wraps around the foot. Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. From underneath. From underneath, that's right, yep. OK, that's it. So nice and firm. No. Good boy. Don't growl at me. I know, I know. Just look at the evil vet. There we go. I do have to keep my wits about me at all times because it's very clear what Claude's intent is. It is to bite the vet. And although I'm there to try and support Marcus, I do need to make sure I keep myself at a safe distance so I don't get bitten. How are we feeling? Can we continue yeah. with this dressing, do you so think? what's next? So take this over the top, OK? Now this stuff, because it's stretchy, we have to be careful not to be too tight. Yeah. Let me see it. What's that? But you're pretty confident that he won't go for you, right? I hope not. He hasn't as yet. Good. Look, I'm the bad guy. He's a good guy. Good boy. Good boy. <coughs> hey. 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 Don't do that. I think he thought my hand was Scott's hand, but he didn't actually bite me. He kind of stopped, and I like to think that that's because he realised it was me. Right, that's it. Good job. Done? Yeah. yeah. I've never had to get uh, a non-veterinary worker perform a dressing change. So uh, that was a first for me. <laughs> and you did very well. Oh, hey? Good. Yeah. Hey? I can't tell you how relieved I am that Claude trusts Marcus enough to change his dressings. Claude's definitely a one-man dog. The leg's healing nicely, and from now on, Marcus is in charge of bandaging. So it looks like I'm off the hook, and at least I keep all my fingers intact. All the best, Marcus. I nice see. All right, we'll see you again soon. Lucky Bye. me. Come on. Bye, mate. Oh, he wants to leave. Let's go. <laughs> Near Canberra, mobile vets and twins Audrey and Alison are making an unusual house call to one of their regulars. Do you think Scott's going to be happy to see us today? <laughs> He's not happy to see anyone. But he may be happier after he fixes his teeth. You never know. I doubt it. Today we're going to one of our favourite places in the world. It's called Possumwood Wildlife Sanctuary. Thank you. Hi, Hi, Rosemary. Hi, Rosemary. Hi, Alison. Oh, come on. I'm so glad you're back. Rosemary is one of the owners here at Possumwood Sanctuary. She's dedicated her whole life to saving the wildlife. So at Possumwood, they treat a lot of kangaroos, wombats, possums. So when you walk in the gate, the first thing you notice is lots of roos. We've got mothers and joeys, and, and it's just amazing to watch and see. Hey, where's your mama? And how's our new patient? He's a bit naughty. A bit naughty. Yeah, uncooperative. Uncooperative. <laughs> and naughty. it will be a challenge. We'll have our work cut out for us today, oh, we then. Certainly will. Yes. We certainly will. You're going to be the mate. <laughs> <laughs> We've got him out the back, so he's ready and waiting. OK. We got this. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> All right. All thanks, thanks, Rosemary. Rosemary. Rosemary's got this sly little smile on, so I'm starting to get nervous. Hello. But it's not a roo that Rosemary has lined up for the girls today. <laughs> So we walk to the back of the house and there's a cage inside a cage. Oh, hello. He doesn't look that cute. bad. So we go up to the cage and we see a cute little wombat. Hey. <laughs> Spot not happy. I love wombats. I think they're so cute and cuddly. They look like they wouldn't hurt a fly. And then you meet Spot. Oh, that was oh. lunch. So Rosary's mentioned that she has seen that there's a problem with his teeth. That's why we're here. We want to give them a good look. So the action plan today mm -hmm. is we have to get the one back out Yes, first. we have to get the one bat out. Now, that is the challenge. <laughs> but the problem with wombats is when they bite you, they actually bite and twist. So they do quite a lot of damage if they get, say, your finger or something stuck in their mouth. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh Lord. There's snarling, there's growling, he's lunging at us. He's just completely turned 360. Do you think he'll jump up? See, he seems so sweet when he's just... He, he is sweet when you're just not doing anything to him. We need to do things to him. 
So Spot was found on the side of the road with his mother, who had been hit by a car and had unfortunately passed away. And he's been angry ever since. We're going to have to maybe get him to one side of this bin and someone come from behind and sedate him in the thigh. And so someone does the jabbing and someone does the... Um, Distracting. Distraction. Mm -hmm. Which end do you want? I think you're better at jabbing. OK, you can get the bite. I'll in. get the distraction by the end. Mm -hmm. You've got to get that needle in, like, straight away, cos he's going to be thrashing. And I have nothing to protect you with. The towel. The towel is not going <laughs> to do anything. <laughs> Grab me the broomstick. Yeah. I'm a little bit scared because I'm really depending on Alison to be very distracting with her broom and just get him to try and bite her instead. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Pray for me. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. God. I'm not feeling confident. She's I'm that's... not feeling confident with this head. OK, do you want me to cover? Give, give me the cap. Cover the head? Oh, ah! I'm not covering the head. I think I can... Ah! No. Go, 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 go. Ah! I did it, I did it. Ah! I did it, I did it. Close it, close it, close it, close it. Yeah! I did the needle. But I think it went Did in. you give him the whole dose? Yeah, it's point two. So we're just going to make sure that he is sleepy enough for us to carry him, because that sedation is going to wear off pretty quick. You want to give him a bit of a nudge? Yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> the girls must move quickly before Spot wakes up. Oh my god, he's so angry. He's somewhere in there. Oh, he's waking, he's waking up, up, he's waking up, he's waking up! Oh my god, he's going to get out. Bit of a bumpy ride. Oh. Oh, watch that claw. Oh, you are not right. So we constantly have to monitor their heart rate, their respiratory rate, their depth of anaesthetic, because with these guys, they can turn pretty quickly. His heart rate's good. It's a good body condition. It's a good body condition, considering he's had a bit of trouble eating, so we're quite pleased with that. Yeah, so we've definitely done some damage to those top incisors. It's quite sharp. I think that's what's cutting his lip at the top. Given how shattered those top teeth are, it's probably the reason why he's so angry, because yeah. it must be quite sore. So we'll file down his teeth just because there are some sharp edges there that are cutting into his lip. Yeah. Wombats have open rooted teeth, and that means that their teeth continue to grow throughout their life. Once we get those sharp bits out the way and it grows through, they should be well enough to be able to eat and drink normally again. So as we're using the electric drill to file down those teeth to make it nice and smooth, we've got to make sure that we don't overheat the surface. So I'm getting Alison to just dribble some water onto the surface of the teeth and that should drill away nicely for us. He's getting light, can you turn him back on yep. please? So we're just going to keep analysing his depth and as soon as we feel like he's getting light, we'll put the mask back on for a little bit. It's vital that Spot stays sedated so he doesn't wake up and bite Audrey's hands. I've only got a little bit more to do on that side, and then I'm happy. Yeah, it's pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with what we've done today. Um, those teeth feel really nice and smooth. There's no sharp edges there that are going to cut into his lip when he's trying to eat. Uh, so I think he'll feel a lot more comfortable now. OK. Back to where you were before, like nothing happened. It's so hard looking at him now to think how aggressive and he's he was. He's so cute right now. He looks like an angel just sleeping there. Good night, Spot. Sleepy sleep. So it's great that this is now done so that once he's recovered, he can be safely released back into the wild. Here we go, buddy. Sleepy sleep. The Spot, he's a much happier wombat. Now his sore teeth have been fixed by Audrey and Alison, and he's been released back into the wild. Hi, I'm Dr. Kate, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen for more great content. And for free, exclusive, never seen before Bondi Vet stories, you can sign up to bondipet.com, and you can do so via the link in the description.